hey, it works. So, uh, yeah, my name is Rolf. I am a uh, full stack developer and uh, consultant from Norway. I run View School uh, together with my partner Alex, where I'm also a teacher. This is Alex. At View School, as probably all of you should know by now, uh, we teach Vue.js and the ecosystem, like Nuxt, testing. This is a video that should play. Let's see. Yeah. Imagine it's scrolling through many, many, many exciting courses. Yay! It's the internet. Uh, yeah, so we teach Vue.js through uh, video courses and also some articles on our blog. And this is the amazing crew behind our courses, either as teachers themselves or as contributors. And uh, many of them has, have already been on this stage today, and some of them will be later and tomorrow, which is awesome. We travel around the world and we do in-house workshops and training, uh, which we love to do. So companies come to us, they say, hey, we want to get better at this, and we put together an extensive training program, and we go out and we have fun. We dig into the theory, exercises, and so on. So I consider myself to be a power user. I can do pretty amazing things on my computer. Like besides feeding my family, I can tap through windows. I can also rearrange the windows as I say fit with my power user tools. And if needed, I can minimize the window very fast. <laughs> you see, I really, really love shortcuts. And as generalizing as it may be, I think most of you are the same. So I wonder, why is it so that we love shortcuts, we want shortcuts, but we don't freaking make shortcuts in our web applications? Why? And today, this is a frustrating delay here, I'm sorry, let's see. This is better. So today, I am going to, great. Yeah, that was smart. Today, I'm going to show you how we can easily make uh, application shortcuts, and by that I mean keyboard shortcuts in our Vue.js applications by using a renderless event component. And um, <laughs> first of all, when we need to make um, um, shortcuts in our applications, it's very important that the event listener is global. And global events, they are assigned directly to the window object, contrary to when you assign a click handler to a button, like you see in the bottom here. So a renderless component is a component that doesn't render a template. It doesn't have a template. It's only the state and the JavaScript and the behavior. So it's just the JavaScript part of the component. And we define a renderless component by giving it a render function that is either empty or return null. Simple as that. And by giving a component a render function, we're telling Vue to not look for a template or a mounting point specified by the L option. So I want to have a component that looks like this. This is the API I want. We can give it an event. And uh, whenever that event is fired, we can invoke a method. So when the user scrolls, the do something method will be invoked. So we create our component. Uh, we start off by creating our component and making it renderless by giving it an empty render function. We need a prop for the event. Nothing fancy here. Should be a string, required. And then in the mounted lifecycle hook, we add our event listener to the uh, window object. 
And this needs to, whenever the event is fired, it will uh, invoke the handle method on this component, which will be responsible for notifying the parent that, hey, the event actually happened. And we do that by emitting a custom event. And, this, <clears throat> and as with many things in life, we have to clean up after ourselves. So in the destroyed uh, lifecycle hook, we will remove the event listener. And this is it. This is all we need. Is it OK? Yeah. This is all we need to, to create this awesome, uh, awesome renderless event component. And I will show you a demo. So I made a companion repository that I will link, through, link to in the end of the talk, where you can navigate through the examples with your keyboard if you want to. And um, yeah, so it says, scroll to see the rainbow. And when I scroll, I change the background color. Pretty neat. This isn't the most useful feature, but it's pretty cool that we, with one line like this, can listen for events like that and also clean up after ourselves. So if I go to the next um, example and scroll, this isn't technically scrolling, this is just looking like I'm scrolling, but it works, then it wouldn't change the color because we have removed the event listener. And <clears throat> we can also do something else. We can listen for network events. This is very exciting. What can go wrong? <laughs> Boom. So when I lose connection, I get an instant message saying, oops, you lost your connection. And now the exciting part. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, that was fast. And it disappears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the cool thing is that yeah, to make the last example, this is the, the main, the, the important part of the code. So we listen for an offline event or an online event, and then we trigger our method, which is either show the offline message or hide the message. And these uh, events, they are native. So the browser natively let our application know if we lose the connection or not. And this is great for uh, notifying the user or restrict certain actions if you rely on auto-saving, like many applications do. If you use Dropbox Paper on a train or something like that, you've probably experienced this before. And also, I want to say one more thing about the scrolling example. So one uh, good use case for this would be, imagine that you have a long page, long article or something like that, and the user is in the middle of the page. And as they scroll up slightly, you can slide down your navigation menu where you have the search bar, you can uh, navigate to other places in your application. And then when you scroll down again, you can just slide it up. So you can kind of like slide it in and out as you, as you um, to provide a better user experience. Water. Mm. This talk is about application shortcuts. So let's get away from the events and start with the shortcuts. Here I have a video, and when I hit the space bar, it starts to play. Again, I hit it again, and it will stop. This is behavior that most of us expect to work exactly like this, but it doesn't. In order for this to work, you need to focus on the video player. You need to click the video player first, and then you're controlling the video player. So with a global event, as soon as I go into the page, I can hit space and it will start. So imagine if you use Dribbble or maybe Instagram, I don't know, you have like the L for liking something. Could be good for many, many use cases. So in this case, I listen for the key up event and then I toggle the video. And since we are listening for the any key uh, up event, I need to filter, I need to check if the key that I really wanted to act upon is actually called. So I say I have this conditional, and then I uh, conditionally play or pause the video based on the current state. And then notice here that I use a ref to easily access the video, the DOM element directly in our component. The problem with this code to me, or for me, is that it doesn't look like proper view code. 
I would much more prefer to use the V on directive directly, and especially the shorthand. So I'd like to go key down dot space and then toggle video. So in order for us to do that, we need to grab the event listener or yeah, in a different way. So let's see how we can tackle that. Ooh. This is exciting. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So we can get the event listeners from this dot dollar listener, and then we'll get all of the assigned listeners in any component. And since we are since we're able to add multiple event listeners, we will get an object in return. So we will grab the keys from that object and then we will loop through it. This is essentially uh, every event. Then we will add the event listener like we did before and we will extract the handler from, from the object as well. Now we can remove the props and the method completely because we don't need it anymore. That's nice. And then we need to clean up and we'll do exactly the same thing. We will loop through the listeners, uh, but instead of adding the event listener, we will remove it. Make sense? And now we have it, the event listener 2.0. So now we can use the desired API that I'd like to use. And notice here that we use the dot space key modifier and Vue.js takes care of that for us automatically, which is awesome. We don't have to deal with that dark magic. And we can now refactor the toggle video method. We can get rid of this ugly conditional and have a tighter method or function. We can also refactor the network example into a one-liner, at offline, at online. Look how nice this reads. So another thing you could do, and I would say that application shortcuts is not for the general user. General users, they don't get it. It's difficult to explain what um, shortcuts you offer the user. So, but imagine that you have either a business tool or you have a dashboard or you have like some application that users spend a lot of time in. They work a lot and they will save a lot of time by knowing the shortcuts. So for instance, you have a dashboard and anywhere on the page you can hit Command F and open a search box. It automatically focuses, you can close it with escape, you can type, search, and imagine that some results will open here, you can navigate through them with the, the arrows and hit enter to open them and so on. Pretty handy. And in order to achieve this, we need this. This is the responsible code for, for showing uh, this uh, search box. So we need three listeners, but the two first are essentially the same. Uh, the meta key is either the command or the, um, uh, the Windows key, depending on the operating system. 70 is the key code for F, and escape is self explanatory. And like if you look away from the event listener and the, the shortcuts system, it's a simple template conditional. It's a V if. And this could be a component, right? And inside that component, you will handle the search or the lookup or whatever it is. So this is kind of um, simple to implement, but if you put some energy into it, you can make pretty cool stuff. So I did that, I sat down and I thought, let's look at the table. What can we do with the table? And I think that as a developer, we are often um, assigned tasks to create basically web design. Like we don't have any design specs to work from. The, the task giver says, hey, we just need a page. It doesn't need to look that great. Just make it work. And then they have a ton of data. We don't know how to structure it. So we whip out the good old table, and we just force everything into that table. And now it's too big. What do we do? Horizontal scroll. Right? But <laughs> it's ugly. It's difficult to parse, like, yeah, and so on. So 
this is what I like to call the table 2.0. And I think that from, day, from today, from now, everyone should make tables like this. And yeah, before we go into the shortcuts, one thing that every developer can think of, or is an instant improvement to any table, is that it's OK to have multiple lines of text inside one row. So here I have two rows at the top, but you can easily have three. It looks cool. We have uh, space around it, so it's easy to, to read. And I also de-emphasize the text by using a lighter text um, font color. So imagine that this could be any list. It could be orders, customers, whatever you want, to, want it to be. And you can navigate up and down with your arrows. You can select the customers with space. And when you do, you get this um, action menu on top that you can hit right or left to navigate. And when you go all the way to right, it loops through. You can remove it by deselect everything, and same here. And all of the excess information that you would like to see, but you don't need all the single time, can be shown by hitting Enter. And this is kind of like a modal. It's just wrapped like a neat page. You can notice here that I have this uh, X, uh, X button. You can also hit Escape to get back to it. And of course, since this is JavaScript, when we go back, it's still in the same state. And it's the same underlying logic here as with the search button. It's a very simple uh, conditional. I can show you. So the user card, if show details, otherwise show the table. Right. And uh, notice that I also, inside this menu, have a uh, navigation menu on the bottom here that you can also uh, go on with. So I think this is pretty neat. And um, yeah. So the companion repository will be available at github.com slash viewschool slash application shortcuts, take a picture of this. <laughs> I have one disclaimer, I cheated a bit on the last one. That's, I don't use the renderless event component that we created because I needed so many listeners that I decided to use the composition API. But that's good for you because you're expert in the composition API now after the Greg's talk, Thorsten's talk, and so on, and also Philip's. So that's easy peasy for you. And if you want to use the renderless event component uh, approach, uh, Damien and Eduardo has made a package that does exactly what I showed you here today. Uh, but they also cover some of the edge cases that I didn't bring uh, to your attention today. So take a picture of this, use this package, or you can build it yourself. It's quite small and fun and easy to do. And I really hope that I inspired you and motivated you to go home and implement more shortcuts for the power user uh, in your applications today. And if you like, uh, liked what you saw today and want to learn more stuff like this, uh, you should definitely grab your one month free pass. There was a bug with a printer that made the passes. So the passes were supposed to have a URL in the bottom because some phones cannot scan the QR code directly with their camera which is a bad feature. So uh, for those of you who can't scan it and don't bother to download an app to scan it and so on, take this URL, register there, uh, do so within 48 hours, we will close down the sign up form. Take a picture. And uh, right after this, there will be a break and we have a booth. It's in here and to the left. Come see us. Grab uh, some flyers uh, about uh, in-house training, some stickers, maybe more stickers, another one. And uh, yeah, come talk to us. Tell us your favorite shortcuts. We can discuss Vue.js training and whatever. Thank you.